Welcome back to Grand Tactician Civil War Union Campaign. So, at the end of the last episode, we had a... The last episode was a, a second battle where Smith's army at Norfolk defended against a southern attack by Polk's command. Beat them off pretty handily, gotta say. Polk is retreating. But uh, we still have this Confederate fort at Norfolk, which had been beat down by our ironclad fleet with no result and I'm, we moved the ironclads back up to Maryland to kind of lick their wounds from that battle even though they were successful they didn't get credit for it and this fort's still here now back up to 100%. So I'm trying to get Smith's Army of the Chesapeake, which has already captured Norfolk and the supply depot, trying to get them to besiege it. And so what I did was uh, I saved the game and then exited out, hoping that by rebooting the game, maybe it will trigger the siege here to uh, take Fort Norfolk. But before I unpause time, just a couple of other off-camera things that I did. We have 200, almost 250,000 soldiers in service. However, over the next three months, we've got 43,000 whose enlistments are expiring. And the bulk of those contract expirations are going to occur in the first and the third corps the army of the potomac and in the first corps where are they first corps of the army of the ohio and then there's some brigades in uh, mcclellan's and lyon's smaller independent armies as well so what I've done is I didn't go and create a whole bunch of new brigades directly in the field at armies, but I created two kind of administrative armies. I made the Department of Indiana and the Department of Pennsylvania. And I have recruited about a core's worth of units into both of those. And the idea is that these forces will collect up the units and then train them up to green readiness and basically make them uh, combat ready and then transfer those out to where they are needed. So nine infantry brigades, two cav brigades, and three artillery batteries in each of these departments. And I didn't bother with, you know, division and core structures and everything. It's just straight up a bunch of units. I also put one fort in each department, not really because I wanted the forts in there for any uh, tactical or administrative reason but mainly just so in the game each of these departments always has a fort under it some force under its command which will keep it in existence and, and i don't have to keep a, a brigade or an artillery battery back uh, just to maintain the existence of the army that, that's the that's the only reason i put forts in these otherwise you know, if I just take all these units and shove them off to the Army of the Potomac and nothing is left, then the Department of Pennsylvania would cease to exist. Anyway, so I did that. And I'm kind of uh, debating, do I want to force a battle between the Army of the Potomac and the Army of Northern Virginia before... All these enlistments expire which in the first and the third core it's showing um, two months now those brigades will not just entirely disappear because you've got this uh, 
Estimated reenlistment ratio, 46%. I think the way I interpret that, if I'm not mistaken, is that let's say a brigade has 2,000 men and the contracts expire in one month. I think what will happen in one month is the contracts expire, they are all free to go home, and about half of them, almost half of them, 46%, will re-enlist and stay in the brigade. Which is good, I mean, that retains experience. But basically... I think in a couple months, the first and the third corps are going to be cut down to half size, uh, most of their brigades. Hooker's second corps was recruited a little bit later, uh, formed a little bit later, and most of his men are on at least 12 month contracts, uh, excuse me, 24 month contracts. But I'm kind of thinking, while these guys are here, fight the ANV, knock them back some. The only thing that holds me back from that is if I fight a battle, take a lot of casualties, and then these brigades get cut down to half size, could, could be kind of a skeleton force. And we've already seen that, you know, AI units going to recover pretty quickly and go back on the offensive. I'm not 100% sure that they play by the same readiness uh, and morale recovery rules that the player does. Also worth mentioning Pierce's Corps, Longstreet's Corps, Magruder's Corps down here at Petersburg these these four these cores have all uh, fairly recently formed. Longstreet's corps is the old Army of the Potomac, Confederate Army of the Potomac. But by and large, I think most of these uh, Confederate troops in these formations have been recruited more recently and have longer enlistments. In, in other words, I don't think that the Confederates uh, have the same problem that I do on these expiring contracts coming up this summer. So I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do there. I feel confident that I can go into them, win a victory, but it's not real clear what the situation is going to be after that. And then the other thing that I'll mention is uh, I, I took a look at the uh, weapons we had available. And uh, with the industrialization policies that we've done, the, the small arms production is, is starting to ramp up. And I have been able to arm all of the Army of the Potomac, all of the Army of the Ohio, uh, the Army of the Chesapeake down here at Norfolk, and Patrick's new Army of the Shenandoah. These are all armed with basically standard uh, rifled small arms. Either uh, Smithfield rifle muskets or infields or Lorenz. The Army of the Missouri under Lyons, they've all got some form. Where are these guys? Yeah, this army here out in Missouri, they have some form of rifle, but some of these brigades have things like 1817 rifles and uh, reboard muskets. So they've all got rifles, just not you know, kind of obsolete ones and lower quality ones. 
and the only force we have that still has a lot of just smoothbore muskets in it is uh, McClellan's Army of the Kanawha. As far as what the Confederates have been doing, we know what Polk's been doing. We've got the Army in Northern Virginia here, their main force. We've got the Army of Georgia, which uh, Patrick will probably soon be engaging. The Army of the Northwest, last seen under the command of Beauregard, was also last seen up here in the Lynchburg area. They've moved on down south. They're now in North Carolina, uh, not far from Greensboro, and that's a pretty recent date. It's May, it's May 27th, and he was located here as of May 25th, only two days ago. So not really sure what Beauregard is up to. Maybe coming up this way toward uh, West Virginia from this direction, or maybe he's headed down south. I, I don't know. <coughs> but the fact that we can even see him and have a location at all uh, is an indication that our, our overall intelligence capability is slowly improving. If you zoom all the way out and I turn on the... Uh, And that probably has a lot to do with the fact that McClellan's presence here near the Virginia border at Lewisburg uh, has actually put some of these geographic points temporarily. You know, this uh, supply depot, this salt works, this little town here. Only because of this army presence, at least temporarily, these are considered under Union control. If he moved away, they would not be. But that has pushed the front line a little bit uh, closer to the Army of the Northwest. And if you zoom all the way out and turn on the intelligence overlay, you know, the, the deeper the shade of red, the better the intelligence is. And kind of the knowledge of what's going on all through here is much better than it was at the beginning of the campaign. Okay then. I'm just going to start time moving to see if that prompts uh, a siege battle here between Smith's army and Fort Norfolk. Might have to wait until Polk's rear guard action is complete. No. Okay. All right. So the next thing I'm going to try then is I'm just going to move. Smith some distance away outside of the range of the fort and then I'll just move him right back in and see if coming into proximity again inside combat radius will prompt that uh, siege. Schenck has reached destination I believe that means that Schenck is now capturing Nashville check that yes Army of the Ohio is now in the process of capturing Nashville still have this supply situation over here I hope that once he captures in some of these points come uh, under Union control that we solve our supply problem like here I mean Shanks He's out of food entirely. And so is the first corps, out of food. Still has some forage left for the horses. Nope, the Army of the Northwest 
have another updated position is moving over toward Raleigh. He may be coming up here toward Norfolk. Don't know. Well, the Army of Georgia has come back and is besieging Fort Mackey. And because the Army of the Potomac has moved south, they are not helping out. Going to ease the first corps back just far enough to help in this siege while still remaining within reinforcement range of the third and the second corps. I think that also gives the green light for Patrick to move up into Winchester. Okay, the fort is now outside of combat radius, offensive. Now I'm just going to move the Army of the Chesapeake right onto the darn fort. See if he will besiege it. Do we have eyes on the Army of the Northwest? Oh, he's moved again. It's now over here. Okay, well, I wasn't really watching um, over in Missouri, but Lyons has encountered Sterling Price in the Missouri State Guard. Kind of surprised that the MSG did not retreat. They've only got not quite 5,000 men against Lyons uh, 13,000. This will be the first combat for all of Lyons' men. But I think it's the first combat for all of the Missouri State Guard as well. Battle of Fredericton. Okay, the Onus is on us to attack. I'm not sure if that's Onus or Onus, O-N-U-S. Or the obligation is on us to attack. Green and confident, outstanding, outstanding. Yep, yep. Standard stuff. Where is the one objective? Bow Creek. Okay, so we can expect to find the Confederate somewhere in this area. And the obvious way to go seems to be right down the old plank road. I think the way we'll do this is uh, just put uh, put them in. No, damn it! Don't want you in line.
There we go. Oh, we got a cab brigade too. Oh, also, whenever I uh, bumped up the rifles and all the infantry, every cavalry brigade in all the armies has some form of repeating carbine now, not those initial uh, slow firing uh, musketoon type cab weapons that they start with. Get the cavalry moving out first. Probably sit them about that far. Get the first division moving. then we need to get the commander himself moving. Never get scouts out. Ugh. Artillery didn't move. I think that's because I'd given him a limbering order that hadn't completed yet before I gave him the move, move order. I think. Let's 
go ahead and get uh, the cab in, in line. It's got scouts. Kind of ease on down over here and see if he makes contact. Long wait, lion needs to move up. There we go. We don't see Confederates, but we do see earthworks. I'm going to move the cav up just to push forward our deployment area available because it, it's about 6 p.m. already. There's not going to be any fighting today. If we get this cavalry forward, we can deploy here pretty close. Let's kind of put them over this area. No, not the detachment. The whole brigade. We go. It's got a pretty good position there. There's either a wall or a fence here. There's some high ground. On both sides kind of funneled into this position. It's almost like a reverse of the Second Battle of Norfolk we fought in the last episode. Bring the first division up. One Cav Brigade sighted. Are they all Cav? First division across the creek. Let's see if maybe Gary can spot a few more units over here. Okay, so here's our deployment line. A 
don't really have good uh, cavalry flanking terrain on either side for Geary. I'll just post them here. No, not the, not the detachment, the whole thing. Do have some high ground right here. I don't know if the uh, Artie is going to be able to have line of sight from here or not. I think maybe right in here is our best shot. Nope, that sucks. That's a little better. That kind of shows that this orchard terrain is not blocking line of sight. Let's try them over here. Nope. Okay, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave them limbered. I'm going to put them over here. Then I'm going to try to get them onto this high ground facing this way. I think is what I'm going to do. Get one of the infantry divisions. Okay. First thing I want to do is move this artillery. It's kind of a precondition. Yeah. I don't know if they're going to be able to see or not. I don't really want the 1st Division to attack yet, but they need to come up here and kind of cover the flank of the artillery, about like that ought to work.
see if Geary can work along across this wooded ridge line. That might tire the crap out of him, I don't know. I think Gary can just pull those scouts in. The troop number disparity is enough. I could probably just advance and muscle my way through it. But there are earthworks. Kinda like to make sure the artillery is firing. Hopefully limit limit casualties, I hope. Okay, there's an infantry brigade under Kemper. So two cav brigades. I can't see him now. 1900 thousand. So that's 2900 men right there in the two cav brigades. 31, 4,100, that's 2,200. So this is it. This is all he's got. There's no unspotted units. Okay, cab is in place. Are they going to be able to see and shoot anything? I don't know. Yeah, not bad. Should at least be able to bring the uh, Kemper's infantry under fire. As they are doing. Let's go ahead and give uh, a bombard order. I have read that artillery batteries gain experience faster if you give them counter battery or bombardment orders as opposed to fire at will. I don't know if that's true. I'm just giving it a try. Let's get the arty commander closer to his batteries. Let's work Gary a little bit further. Let's get him over on this road. As far as I know, Price doesn't have any artillery. None spotted, and all of his manning seems to be accounted for in these three units. Let's give everybody long range firing orders. Which I think should be default. They are not. I don't know if that pertains to Cav or not. It doesn't.
I guess I could have centered that bombardment circle a little bit better. <laughs> Let me try that again. No, that's not what I wanted. Cancel that. I think I have to stop the original bombardment order first. Just leave it like it is before I mess something up. Kind of looks like this brigade might be blocking the line of sight for this artillery battery. I'm going to shift this division over just a little bit for that reason. So the battery is firing now. throw out skirmishers just because that might keep this uh, brigade spot from winking in and out like it's been doing. doesn't seem to be doing too much to this guy. He's taking 10 casualties and that's it. And that may not even have occurred from the artillery. Artillery uh, do whatever it's able to do. I don't 
don't think it's going to cause a whole lot of casualties, but hopefully it softens up this uh, brigade's morale before I advance the uh, right flank division. Geary up just a little bit. There's the HQ units. Are we having any effect on this brigade? Not really. Well, I think the artillery is just wasting ammunition, and that's about all there is to it. Slide this division over this way. No. I'm going to have them advance right into the...
Okay, it's coming out in the open. Don't know why. That's fine. That's fine with me. Seems like they'd want to dismount and use that uh, parapet. Just the guy going over to give orders to Geary. <laughs> Run right through the Confederate position. Okay, well, this division has left its skirms behind. They don't seem to be doing any good. Guys are going into the bombardment area, so to give them a fire at will. Let's give these guys a charge order. Kemper is broken. So has Siegel's brigade. This is actually not going too hot.
So Morel's uh, division is completely broke. Well, second second brigade might be uh, salvageable. Let's move this artillery up where it can fire on the. Uh, Put uh, morale in rally mode. Let's get lion over here. That's not what I meant. Let's get lion over here, closer to his unbroken units. Let's just get this brigade up here to cover the flank of the advancing artillery. Attacking. Prices guys aren't doing much better than ours. What's morale doing? <laughs> Morale's kind of crap for both of us. At least these guys haven't run off the field. They may recover some semblance of morale. I 
thought I had already told him to rally. Why is this carrier going all the way around this way? It should have just come right here. got the range. I'm hoping that he is outranging these cavs. He should be. Same with 3rd uh, Brigade once in uh, position. I think they need to get over this crest. There goes the courier across no man's land to take orders to, I guess, the artillery. Better get this commander back up here to this brigade. I thought I had told this commander to come back up here to this one brigade.
artillery on these guys. Training is actually very good. Okay, I think we need the calf to remount. Well, they kind of turned it around there at the end. I think I was a little bit too cavalier with just doing the mass advance. I should have been a little bit more careful. I think some of the units just kind of got discombobulated or confused or something. Right here at the end, it all turned around. With the troop disparity, that, that was tougher than it should have been.
All right. I think it's about all we're going to get. Fifteen hundred to eight hundred. Twenty seven percent of his force. That was a messier win than uh, <laughs> I would have liked. <laughs> Third of his cavalry, and then about a, not quite a quarter of that infantry brigade. Okay, we may have had a couple of defamed officers there. General Gordon got a uh, little fame there. I'm not sure who that is. That might be the artillery commander. No, Kemper uh, got defamed, though, on the Confederate side. Okay, so the Missouri State Guard should be, should be retreating south. Hopefully he doesn't retreat right into Cairo. Double check the telegrams. Just a bunch of arrival messages. Okay. Patrick has arrived at uh, has arrived at Winchester. So Winchester's being captured. That's good. Uh, First Corps, the Army of the Potomac, is now supporting Fort Mackey against the Army of Georgia. It's not reflected yet, but that'll that'll show in the uh, troop numbers here pretty soon. One would hope. Don't see any movement here? I don't know why the army that's in the middle of the afternoon, I don't know why the army of the Chesapeake isn't moving on Fort Norfolk. Maybe he hasn't gotten the order yet. Yeah, he's moving. Okay. Well, I think it's a good time to put in a break. And we'll see you for the next episode. Thank you for watching.